Hello class, this is Mr. Lehman. I want to talk to you about the Copper Cycle Lab, also known as the CU Later Lab. Uh, we took our copper metal, and we started out copper metal, and we want to see how we could change it. And so we went through a series of chemical reactions, we went through a series of chemical changes, and we started out with copper as an element, and essentially we created four different compounds of copper, and then we got our copper back. So the first reaction is we reacted it with nitric acid. I'm not going to write the S's, the L's, the G's, or the AQ's to help speed up this process. And these two things reacted in a fume hood, and it produced, uh, essentially the copper came in, kicked out the nitrate, kicked out the hydrogen combined with the nitrate. And so we get copper nitrate, and we also got the very poisonous brown gas, which is nitrogen dioxide, and then we also got some water along with that. So that was the first step. We then, after the gas was gone, we added some water to this, and we took our copper nitrate, and we brought it to the front of the room, and we added it to the sodium hydroxide, or we added some sodium hydroxide, about two milliliters, to our beaker. This produced a second chemical reaction, and what happened here is that the copper and the sodium, the Cu and the Na, switch places. And so if the Cu comes over here and takes sodium's place, it combines with the OH. So this whole reaction produced copper hydroxide, which turned the color even more blue. And then we also got some sodium nitrate which we're not going to write down the sodium nitrate because we're not really too concerned about the sodium nitrate. So that was the second step. The third step, we proceeded to take the copper hydroxide and we put it on the hot plate. The heat caused the copper hydroxide to decompose and start to break down and it caused copper oxide to form along with some water. The copper oxide appeared black. It was a black solid. We wanted to separate it from the water, so that's why we passed it through the filter, and then we let the filter dry overnight. The next day we came in, we took our brown solid, black solid, and we added some sulfuric acid to it after we scraped it off the filter paper. This produced another chemical reaction. You know, acids are very reactive, and that's why things react with them so well, and uh, we get new things forming. And what happened here, is the copper and the hydrogen switch places again in this chemical reaction. And so the copper comes over here and combines with the sulfate to produce the blue copper sulfate solution. And then the H2 combines with O to make good old liquid water. We then took our copper sulfate, which is in a beaker, a blue solution. We added some zinc metal to it. And zinc is more reactive than copper, so zinc went in and said, hey, copper, get out of here. And zinc combined with the sulfate. And poor, lonely copper was once again all by itself. And so we started out with 0.1 grams of copper, and if we did everything perfectly, we should get 0.1 grams of copper back. And this is because of the law of conservation of mass, which says that whatever you start with, you end up with the same amount of material. And simply during a chemical reaction, that material gets rearranged into new things. So we didn't create any new matter. We didn't destroy any matter. We simply rearranged our matter. And at the end, we should have got all the copper back. Now, we probably didn't get all the copper back because you know some of the black solid was left behind on the filter paper. We may have left a little bit in the beakers, not get all the liquid out. But it was a very good lab, and hopefully this helped you and will help you write your stories. I'm very interested in hearing your creative stories, so go wild with that. Remember to do 740 Monday morning through turnitin.com.